from County College of Morris. This is CCM All Access. Hello, and welcome to CCM All Access, the show that brings you news and information from the County College of Morris. Students at CCM, members of the community, people doing good things. I'm Brenda Todd, and our guest today is Dr. Kathy Naz, who is the Dean of the School of Business, Mathematics, Engineering, and Technologies. Welcome, Kathy. Thank you for having me, Brenda. You bring with you just a, a cornucopia, a plethora <laughs> of experience, and so we have a lot to cover. Um, first of all, tell us about your position here at CCM. So this position um, for me personally is a wonderful, wonderful opportunity because I get to bring to the students and the faculty and the community a culmination of my experience. If you look at my background, it's business, it's engineering, it's technology, and as you said in my wonderful long title, <laughs> yes. it brings all of those things together. And I have to say, when you look at a lot of schools of higher education, they keep the business students separate from the technology mm -hmm. students, but not at CCM. And look at the startups, right? Most of the startups are tech startups. Absolutely. Why do we keep on separating these students from a learning and working together on projects perspective? Absolutely. So here at CCM, we bring them together. And I'm just so happy that this institution has that foresight to put it all under one right. dean. And so was it always together? No, I, I believe it was, in my experience here, I believe that it came together a couple of years ago. Okay. Um, so yeah. I have to dig deeper into that one. Right. But I don't think it was always together here. Now, how long have you been here? Seven weeks. <laughs> seven weeks? <laughs> yeah, seven weeks. Okay. <laughs> That's why those historical questions will be a little bit hard sure, for me. Sure, sure. Okay, we, we will not burden you with those at all. So um, tell us a little bit then about, about the different programs that the school offers. So um, starting with business, you know, we have the uh, pathway that if you want to be a, bu a business professional, get your associate's degree here, you can go and work right after the two years. You can start okay. in a career. We also have a large transfer program. So if you're looking at having a full Bachelor of Science from a four-year institution, you get started right it started at CCM, and we have transfer agreements in place sort of at the state level, going to another New Jersey school, everything's accepted. Um, we have a great new offering in social media mm -hmm. marketing with the communications program. So especially people that want to retool and get new skills sure. can get that here in social media marketing. That's one school. Mathematics for transfer if you want to be an educator in mathematics. Mm -hmm. Engineering, we have engineering science, mechanical engineering, biomedical, just some wonderful things technology, we have information security, think cyber security, sure. we have computer science, and then we also have very fun and close and near and dear to my heart, culinary and hospitality. So okay. culinary arts, hospitality, management, and also criminal justice is underneath oh, my purview. Wow. So that's, a lot of a lot of different programs, but all leading to very in demand jobs. Right. Now I know you're a big proponent of social media education. Yes. Right? And you've done a couple of things around yes, that subject. Yes. So I launched actually the first um, social media marketing program to be part of a bachelor's degree in my former role. And I looked so much, what, what brought me to that space was I was looking at all the jobs. And actually at that point in time, it was probably 2013 on LinkedIn, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for skills on LinkedIn, social media marketing skills in two years went like this. It was 1,357%. Wow. Wow. So it just was skyrocketing and I said if there's jobs jobs out there, we have to put that forward. Absolutely. And at CCM, we're doing that also. Absolutely. And then there's also certifications here. Yes. So we have 16 degree programs and 17 certifications. Okay. So a certification is great if you want to come back and you don't want to get a full degree. You can take, you know, 14 credits, 15 credits and get a certification. Sure. You know, so you could be doing it in information security. You could be doing it in CAD design. You can truly upskill, potentially change 
your career mm -hmm. path. But if you're also here as a student working on an associate's, you can add those certs in to diversify your resume. Okay. So it's really very modular, stackable credentials that you can add, whether you're not going to be a full-time student, but you just want to get some more skills mm -hmm. under your belt, or if you want to differentiate your degree. Right. And some people just to enhance their workplace skills. Exactly. They come, they come here. Exactly. And, and, um, so we do offer day, evening, online. Yes. Right. So, and hybrid, hybrid, which hybrid, hybrid means, um, you know, some you have some classes that are in the physical classroom mm -hmm. and some that are online. But right. ve very flexible because learners today are vast. Right. Yes. So you have people, you know, the traditional coming out of high school or even we have high school students who are still in high school taking classes okay, here right? at CCM. Yeah. But then you have the people that are working. Right. You know, I think it's 64 percent of all college students work. Oh. Yes. I was yeah. just reading that before this interview. So yeah. it's a large, exactly. large percentage. And I like to call them the working learners. Right. And we need to have flexibility for them and also skills that are in demand for them. Absolutely. Now, tell me about the students. Is that, that's part of your job, yes. right? Yes. Really working one-on-one -on -one with students. Yes. So for me as a dean, you know, I look across. We're, we're actually the largest school at CCM. We have over 2,500 students in okay. the School of Business, Mathematics, Engineering, Technologies. Sure. It's a mouthful. <laughs> but we have a lot of students. And what is great is I love when well, you're walking, you know, our offices or in, in right. the academic complex. So I, I love student facing. I, you know, I taught for many years. And for me, it's the energy that you get from engaging Absolutely. with students and bringing the real world into the classroom. Um, just last week, I was able to attend a lot of events uh, that were student facing. But to give you a glimpse, right, we had high school students working with NASA, oh, right? Wow. And, you know, we have great labs here. So these students actually, to NASA specifications, design components that are used in the space shuttle. Wow. So I get to come and yeah. I get to sign off on the locker. That's going to be in space, right? Yes. I go from that to our criminal justice program just wow. had received a simulator that's used in the police academy to simulate different scenarios where they have to protect themselves and make very quick judgment yes. calls. And they, we were running through the scenarios and do you shoot, not shoot. So we come from that and our students yes. have access to this, right? Yes. Then I go to exactly. the culinary department, you know, and we're getting a food trailer. <laughs> so I'm like looking at the food trailer and thinking about how the students who are all, who, are, who can take a course mm -hmm. in food truck entrepreneurship. I mean, how cool is that, right? Wow. Learning how to yeah. be a food truck entrepreneur. That's fantastic. So that's my life that I get to go to these wonderful events and partake. Oh, and I should say the business school invited me over because they just got their market wall in place. Okay. And students participate in a competitive challenge to stock trading, and it's that's being really displayed fun. on the market wall. So that these are the really types wonderful. of experiences. And I was looking at a student in front of the wall. I'm like, what do you think? Like, this is great. You know, and you can see the different names up and how they're doing and how they're performing. Not real money in that case. Right. <laughs> they're right. trading fake money. Right. <laughs> So, uh, so you've been here for seven weeks, mm -hmm. and what what has that been like? What does that look like? Your your day to day. Every, uh, you told us a yeah, little bit. Just yeah, now, every but. day is different, and. I love this job. I mm -hmm. really do. I feel that, you know, the scope of responsibility is broad. Um, you definitely impact policies that yes. impact students and student learning. To me, it's all about that learning, yes. getting them more engaged in that process. So um, every day is different. Every single day is different. So it goes from administrative stuff to being strategic and thinking what's out there, what can we bring onto campus, yes. right? Yes. So um, did you teach in your past? I, I did. I taught, I taught for many years. Um, I was actually teacher of the year one year. Voted Were by you? The students. That's a yeah, big deal. And, yes. That's a big deal. So you yes. taught business? I taught business, okay. yes. And was that after uh, your experience in corporate? Yes. Or? So my life was over a decade in corporate and I loved uh, my corporate experience. Mm -hmm. I worked at AT&T and uh -huh. I started off as, I'm an engineer. I started off at Bell Labs and I just always, you know, I've, I've stayed a long time in those positions. I keep on doing creative stuff and as long as sure. they allow me to do creative stuff, you know, I keep, I kept on growing in the positions. Yeah. So I started off as an engineer and I left AT&T as an executive director. Mm -hmm. I worked globally. I launched four or five businesses for them. So a lot of entrepreneurial work sure. too. And then um, switched into academia and really just had another whole career and started off as a professor, was a dean, a vice president, and now a dean here.
So do you encourage the students to, to branch out on their own and, and look at small businesses that they can start? Is that part of what you do? I encourage them to see opportunity. Mm -hmm. So when you walk around in this world, always be thinking, why do we do it that way? Mm -hmm. Or is there an unmet need? Or can that be done better? And I'm into sure. analogous models. And what I mean by that is you can look at is something that's done. Something that's done in this production environment, how we run this production environment, right. and then say, hey, can that same type of process be applied somewhere else? Absolutely. You know, and can it be done better? Can it be automated? Can it be digitized? Mm -hmm. So I always have them just questioning and thinking. Mm -hmm. And if they have a good idea, to test it out and right. get so observation and get input from others. But I do, I encourage them always, the students, to experiment because it's so easy to create things today and to create an app or to create yeah. you know a small business that brings something new or does something better that's one of the wonderful things because we are living in a creative time very you know, things are just exploding mm -hmm. and the students now if they're being taught to think freely like that then um, that's that's an opportunity you're giving them, right? Yes, and the tools they have in their hands today are what corporations had to pay millions of dollars for. And I'm, yes. I'm truly not exaggerating. I had looked, it was probably in 2011, and sort of what it took to launch a small business back then compared to 10 years uh -huh. prior. So let's say, you know, the start of sure. 2000, that it was 70% cheaper, lower, you know, to start a business. And now we're 10 years forward, right. right? So I look at things that I did in my corporate world and the large business applications that now you have them in the app store, yes. right? So, you know, there's digital assistance, there's if this, then that, right? That can right. make a small business as productive as what the larger enterprises had access to. So this accessibility through productivity tools, you know, mm -hmm. on our Absolutely. phones is really made available yeah. to students now. So I want them to think that way and think about what they can bring forward quickly, sure. really quickly. Sure. Well, I want to get back and talk more mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned and we'll be back in a moment. I'm Andrea Lucia, a graduate of County College of Morris. At CCM, I gained a high quality education, was involved with clubs on campus, and performed university research in tissue engineering. My CCM education prepared me for ongoing success. Today, I am at Cornell University, studying engineering and performing research in cardiac tissue engineering. The professors and staff at CCM helped me to start right and finish strong. And we're back on CCM All Access. I'm Brenda Todd, and we're here with Dr. Kathy Naz. Um, Dr. Naz, we were just talking about small businesses, right? And um, perhaps what CCM offers students who might be interested in opening their own small business. So there's several avenues. Um, first off, for our departments, we have advisory boards of which businesses sit on. So it's great for us to stay in touch with the needs of the small business. But also in addition to sort of the classic degree programs, we do have workforce development. So that focuses on, it's not credited, meaning you can come in and take a course. So a lot of small businesses leverage that. But to your real question of how do the students get ready, truly going through, whether it's a business program, engineering program, working together on real world projects, mm -hmm. they're really learning. It's about experience. Yes. So bringing it forward, they get the hands-on application right. to launch right. the business. That's great. That's yes. great. And we also, oh, we have Shark Tank. We run a Shark Tank. Oh, really? That should have been the first answer. So it's oh, very cool. cool. Um, so, you know, we do that and we have a marketing showcase. So students doing projects. So mm -hmm. all of that is very applicable if they want to get their business started. Oh, so how does the Shark Tank thing work? Um, students come forward and there's a faculty advisor for that. And they actually do their pitches. And there's mm -hmm. a competition. It'll be my first year that I get to be a judge on it. So oh, I'll be involved fun. this year. Yeah, but really it's yeah, sort of copying the big Shark Tank. Yeah. But it really does encourage entrepreneurial spirit. Sure, sure. So let's switch our focus to mm -hmm. you. You um, you were an engineer. Yes. Are an engineer. Yes. Are you ever not an engineer? Yeah, maybe right? you're never not. I don't know. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so uh, that's interesting because that's not really a fee, you know, that's not. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
You know what I'm trying to say. There's not there's not a lot of women in engineering. That's right. At least they're not. They're used to not be. Is that changing? It hasn't changed that no. much, and it's something that I think a lot of people are focusing on. We're trying to focus on it here at CCM also, and it's it's letting students know the power of possibility. Right. Putting in front of them, getting more role models. I, I think social media helps with that mm -hmm. too. To say yes, we're out here doing this. This is possible for you. You know, when I went to my mom, you know, way back when, and I was like, oh, I think I want to be an engineer, and my mother was a wonderful woman yeah. and not critical, so I say this um, with a little bit of caution, but she said, why do you want to do that? It mm -hmm. really wasn't heard of, you know, for sure. females back then, sure. but I had some great guidance counselors that really said, you're strong in math and science, why don't you think about this as a field? Right. And, um, yeah, it was great. It was great. And it's about, you know, technology. If you're comfortable with technology or problem solving and trying to understand how you can improve this world, back to that sea opportunity, right. right? Engineers look at the world a little bit differently. So mm -hmm. you may be sitting out there thinking, oh, I'm not that strong in math and science. Don't let that hold you back. Okay. We have a lot of help here um, to help develop those skills. And having mathematics under me helps also. But to help meet the students where they're at, develop those skills, it's more around looking at the world with curiosity and trying to solve problems. Okay, I've always thought that math was just a given. You'd had you had to be really excellent at math. No, and there's so myself. much fear of math, mm -hmm. and I just you know one of the things I am a mom. I have two girls. We were chatting on the break, and I always told them when they were little. I said I don't like labels. Do never right. come in here and say. I'm not good at this, I'm not good at that. You know, you're going to evolve. We're right. lifelong learners. You know, keep your mind open. Mm -hmm. We all have our strengths and weaknesses. Focus on those strengths. Some people think focus on the weaknesses and change them. I say focus on the strengths okay. and keep on building them, mm -hmm. but don't limit yourself right. by saying, I'm good at this even, or I'm not good at that even, because we're right. constantly evolving. Sure, so pursue your interest yes. and don't let let what you think is a shortcoming hold you back. And let people help you. Mm. The help's out there. That's one thing yeah. I find with young learners, that they don't always take advantage of mm -hmm. the great things we have on campus here. Tutoring center, counseling center, right. you know, helping you think through all the challenges in life of how do you Absolutely. balance working and learning at the sure. same time. So take advantage Absolutely. of that. Absolutely. We're not born knowing these things. No, we're not. <laughs> we're not. So tell us about the engineering department here. So we have, well, we have a new building opening, oh, so 33,000 square feet. I okay. am super excited. Wow. It's the Advanced Manufacturing and Engineering Center, and it's going to bring the community in, um, partnering. Manufacturing is a focus for the state, right? Okay. So we're partnering with the state agenda on that, with companies, engineering, manufacturing, so workforce development is in there. It's just such a nice, the physical building yes. is a nice moment to celebrate all these parts coming together. Yeah. And the labs are so impressive, you know, 3D printing, artificial wow. intelligence, you know, so a lot coming together. And when is that due to open? It's opening, um, it will be, we're going to be officially open to host classes in the fall, but we will have sort of the soft opening this spring. Okay. So you have managed um, multicultural teams over 15 countries, yes. right? I have my little <laughs> list here of all yes. these things. I couldn't, there's no way that I can remember all this stuff. <laughs> no, I've got to refer to my oh, notes, thank okay? You, thank you. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so I, when I worked with Eddie t and and I was pretty young, I was the second person they sent over to commercialize Bell Labs, actually, to bring okay. all the great Bell Labs talent um, to the outside world. And I went over and I lived, well, I worked in Spain for a little bit, and then I lived okay. in the Netherlands. So mm. I lived in Amsterdam, and it was really fun. And then I lived in Paris, and we kept on doing consulting work as an at and employee, mm -hmm. but to help Fortune 500 companies. So that work brought me all around to different countries because I was working with different companies and different right. teams but really at a young age I learned to hire I had to hire internationally and learn about sure. those labor laws very different than the United States absolutely and then just how do you handle intercultural communications and sure. a global team so I, I learned a lot about it and my big learning for all of you out there so to take it into sort of one little nugget right. is truly work with 
the local people in country. Don't mm -hmm. think that you can make all the decisions and launch marketing programs without consulting. Even though Google Translate is pretty good now, right. you know, really work with the local people. Make sure you have someone in country who's helping to advise you and guide you and is empowered to make sure. some decisions because they're close, they're really close to the customer. Mm -hmm. Standardize what you can standardize to save money, but truly empower the local people to make decisions that are customer facing. Yes. Now you know a few different languages, right? That yes. probably helped. Yes, I uh, I speak French, Spanish, um, English, and uh, I I play with Japanese. So I do a bit of Japanese. Okay. Now, did you learn those languages kind of as as needed? Yes, I learned yeah. it. Well, Spanish was from high school, and okay. I grew up in New York, so it was a great second language to have. Right. Um, you could practice on the streets. Um, French by marriage, because yes. my husband's French, okay. and my family really, my in-laws don't speak much English, believe it or not. Japanese, I took here at CCM. Oh, did you? Um, yes, just I because I really wanted to, <laughs> I really wanted to learn a very different language right. that wasn't romance-based to kind of right. challenge my thinking. And it's very fun to write. It's very, very nice to write. Right. So I know you're actively involved in improving education in, in many different directions. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so my philosophy on education, and it's one of the reasons I'm here at CCM, is I believe in accessible and affordable education. You know, the average student carrying so much debt nowadays was starting yes. to sort of weigh heavy on me and thinking about, I was very uh, lucky to have accessible education through scholarships, and not everyone gets that opportunity. Right. And I just felt very strongly that I wanted to be at a place that was having in-demand programs mm -hmm. and that was affordable and accessible to all. Mm -hmm. and, th and that's why I'm here. And my philosophy, so I was thinking about, if you, I don't know if you know the four Ps for marketing. Um, so product, promotion, place, yes, price, right? Yes, I've been that. thinking a lot about the five Ps of education and okay. you know the, the learner is at the center of them, but having great programs, right? Great professors, processes that help the students navigate the system, mm -hmm. get onboarded, mm -hmm. and then pulling in two from the four Ps, make sure the price is right, and the place. So online as a place, make it accessible wherever the student's at, but then also classroom space. So you might have yes. said very into that our classroom's antiquated, right. and we need to design new classrooms, mm -hmm. and they have to be very different and mimic more the working environment going forward. Yes. So I've been thinking about these five Ps to say, really, if we think about the educational service and we believe in that philosophy with the learner at the center, mm -hmm. but make all those other things so fluid for Absolutely. them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I know you don't like to brag because I can tell you're a humble person, but oh, I do have you. to point out a few things. You've won a couple of awards. Yes. Can you tell us about that. So I, I, I lifelong learning. I recently, compl I'm recently Dr. Kathy Naz, oh. only a year old. Yay, yes. that's so wonderful. Very recent and um, one of the, well, I won two awards for my work, my dissertation, of uh, the impact of space on learning and show that actually the physical space, if you change it up, it impacts learning positively. You mean the physical place? The classroom. The classroom. OK. And what are some of the things that you know about that? What's so what do classrooms normally look like? Well, normally, you're sitting in rows. The teacher's up by the blackboard. And you're just sitting. You know, people are behind you, and you're sitting in rows. This is so perfect. So yeah, it's, we didn't plan this, right? <laughs> you answered that. Not. That was like so scripted. That's not. perfectly scripted. What I want you to say. So oh, what if good. there was no front to the classroom? What if there were no rows? What if the blackboard was actually writable walls mm -hmm. around you? And that's what I took. I took this idea of an innovation cave, and had ten professors teach in their standard classroom and then in this cave environment okay. with funky ottoman furniture and just all writable walls with that whiteboard paint. Right. Yes. And said and studied through sound waves if it was mm -hmm. more active and then also through student perceptions and professor perceptions and the students said that they actually learned more and higher order learning like okay. analyzing concepts and forming right. ideas and and they're learning because I'm going to guess these are some of the reasons. They're not bored, mm -hmm. perhaps, um, just sitting there looking at, you know, the professor or whatever. Right. Um, also, maybe the lighting can be distracting for some people. 
um, yes. that overhead light. Natu and it's that's a great point too. Natural light, the space yeah. allowed for natural light to come in, and there's mm -hmm. a lot of studies on that that how lighting helps. Right. And even sitting in those chairs are not necessarily for everyone, right? Mm -hmm. um, I know. For children now, they're starting to talk more about letting them get up and move around. You know, forever they, they made them sit still, sit still, and they had to sit still. Mm -hmm. And it's so important to be able to get up and move around and breathe. Even when you're at home, you're writing a paper, you need to get up and take a break. Exactly. So all those things end, you know, if you're able to express yourself, not just verbally, but by writing, and some people like to draw. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think in bullet points from all those years sure. of presentations, but a lot of people like to express their concepts from drawing. And instead of the blackboard being, you know, 12 feet away and a scary walk sure. to that blackboard, oh. you just turn around and you can write and draw. And if everybody's doing this, Imagine you're drawing something, they say, we can connect concepts faster. A right. professor can see, I like to say, what was invisible, be visible, mm -hmm. and quickly realize if things aren't being learned, and they can jump in and say, oh, no, wait, we're, I see there's a group thing going on here, mm -hmm. we got to, you know, jump in, or even connect concepts, the students were able to connect yes. concepts. So it's pretty powerful, and just the environment being different, sure, and that they're able to move more. So I know Movements a lot of important. offices um, are really changing, and they have kind of that communal yes. feeling. Um, so, yeah, you know, preparing students for that, and and there's a a reason why mm -hmm. those are changing, and that and that happens for for kind of that same. Exactly. Same purpose. Well, that's the other, uh, some other spaces I designed, the social media centers I designed. I, I looked at universities and what they were doing, but I went and looked at New York City startups. Okay. I visited several startups right. and looked at how do they work, how do they collaborate, mm -hmm. right? Because there's a lot to be learned from that and then bringing it back into the university, the institution environment, and saying, hmm, what if a classroom looked more like a co working space? Right. And how do we learn and share right. with one another? Right. Right. Um, okay, I don't. I don't want to go before I ask you about your Google endorsement. Yes. Oh, so well, this is a great story. That was when I was launching the social media marketing program. And and one thing I like to say to anyone out there, and especially students, do the long shot stuff. I do mm -hmm. long shot stuff every week. And I was actually in an online course myself. I think it's always good to be a student, sure. right? It helps you be a better teacher and educator. And I was in an online course. Ten thousand people are in this course. And the professor was the head of Google Analytics. And through working this course and realizing that he was approachable, I reached out to him and I said, I'm designing this program of which digital analytics is a part of for social media. Mm -hmm. Would you be willing to review the whole curriculum? And he said yes, and he sure. did that for me, and we had phone calls, and then I, I remember I was so nervous on the phone call with him. He's like, I'm getting ready to do the kickoff with my team, and I'm thinking he's spending the time talking with me on mm -hmm. the phone. And just in the end, I thought, he's loving this so much. Yeah. I mean, his enthusiasm was coming across over the phone. I said, I'm gonna ask him for a public endorsement. And I said, would you be, you know, would you do a public statement? Yeah. And he said yes, and that got us in the Star Ledger and USA wow. Today. And But you gotta ask the questions. You, you gotta do. reach out, do your research, have confidence in it, mm -hmm. um, and ask. Yes. Because if you don't ask the question, the answer is already no. Right. right? So exactly. if you ask the question and you get a no, don't be upset. Right. <laughs> and what do you have to lose? What do you have to lose? Right. What do you have to lose? So, uh, and just before we go, you you were part of the Hope Leaf Project? Yes. So I brought students down to Columbia and um, we worked with really impoverished artisans mm -hmm. to help them launch um, businesses themselves. And from the profit of that business, we set up little microfinancing so that others could launch businesses. They launched chicken businesses and oh, it just kept right. on growing. Actually, they sent right. me a gift at Christmas time. Oh, that's but, great. Um, but for the students to bring them down there, it was a couple of years ago, but to look at helping others to help themselves yes. to yeah. become independent. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. We Thank could talk you. to you for hours. Oh, so great. And you make me Take smile. Your Looking at you just makes me <laughs> smile. You? So thank you. And vice versa. <laughs> so thank you so much for being our guest today. Thank you, Brenda. Uh, this has been another edition of CCM All Access. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.